This is Adrian Webster, the internationally renowned motivational business speaker and best-selling author. And this is Dr. Jack Lewis, TV's favourite neuroscientist. Together, we've written a book called... Sort Your Brain Out. It does exactly what it says on the tin. Helps boost performance. By helping you understand how your brain works and exactly what you can do to get more out of it. I know a certain amount of stress is good for you. I know about good cop, bad cop, I know about stress being a friend. But what impact does stress have on someone's brain? In short doses, stress is invaluable. Without cortisol, the stress hormone, we humans would get nothing done. We wouldn't be able to deal with stressful situations. The problem is, in large doses, over long periods of time, it's really, really bad for you. We can't function firing on all cylinders every second of every day in emergency mode without it having a negative effect on our health and our mental state. So cortisol then, that, that's the motivator? It mobilizes uh, energy in body and brain and sharpens up your, 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 your attention, your, your think, speeds up your thinking. It helps you deal with the source of the stress, thereby removing the source of stress so that you can reduce the cortisol levels and then, you know, take the pressure off your body and brain so you can do it again later on the next time something stressful happens. But like an old friend coming to stay with you, don't let it overstay its welcome. Exactly right. You've got to take, especially in this day and age when people are incredibly busy both at work and at home, you've got to take time to carve out periods of stress-free relaxation to allow those cortisol levels to come down to levels that are not going to be overburdening your system. I know some of the best talks I've done have been when I've been stressed about doing that talk. Mm -hmm. I know when I've come out in front of the audience, and I, I've, for the last few days, I've been really, really quite worried about that talk and have been stressed out about it. And I'm absolutely buzzing with energy there that that seems to be the time when I do a good talk. So that's cortisol, that's cortisol. Cortisol mixed up with adrenaline, because adrenaline also prepares you to f for fight or flight. You know that you're in a situation where, where, where you need to be ready for action. Um, and, and the adrenaline, together with the cortisol, helps make you ready for that performance. I think the real key for handling stress is to be able to step away from things when you want to, when you choose to. Correct. I call it the stress express that you can ride the Stress Express, you can go on that train and enjoy stress and use it and harness it, but mm. you've got to make sure you're in the driving seat. Absolutely right. Because if you're a passenger and you can't stop and you can't get off when you want to, that's when it seems to become a real problem for people. Absolutely. And the key thing about stress is that, you know, there are things in life, I often talk to people about stress in businesses and schools and so forth and, and they will say well look I, I'm not in control of everything that causes stress in my life it, it, some things are out of my control and, and that's why understanding the variety of different ways you can take a stranglehold on, on those cortisol levels and actually start to bring them down to areas where body and brain can really do the maintenance and you know refresh the synaptic pathways and do all of that kind of uh, overnight repair work it's vital to carve out those stress-free periods. What I have learned over the past few years is to be able to step away from work, step away from business, step back from it, to be able to enjoy the real quality time of the people who matter the most, like my family. So what I do, I do a thing, I call it GOM time. It's a, it's a Tibetan word for meditation. Mm. And I deliberately take time out during the day, just for a couple of minutes, just to step back, just to relax, and most importantly, to unclutter my mind. I, so things become easier and clearer to me. To give you an example, when, when I come back from speaking at a conference, sometimes if I'm feeling sort of pretty stressed and buzzed up, uh, my head's spinning at a thousand miles an hour with different ideas, uh, and I know, and I don't want to be condescending to my family, that their life at home, my wife and children, is running around at five miles an hour, my brain's going at a thousand miles an hour. Uh, so what I deliberately do, I pull up down the road from where I live, it's about half a mile away, into a lay-by, 
And just for two minutes, I switch the engine off, I just do some deep breathing. <laughs> Sounds funny, people probably think I'm going mad if they could see me sat there. And but I just, just to collect yourself? Yeah, just to collect myself, just to picture myself going through my front door, the, the, there's my beagle dog running up to me, and my kids scooping them up <laughs> in my arms and giving my wife a hug. Uh, and the other thing I do, I deliberately leave my baggage, or my luggage, I leave it in the car, in the boot. Uh, until the kids have gone to bed, and then I come out and get it. It's just so I can sort of slow down from a thousand miles an hour to five miles an hour and, and enjoy the really important people in my, in my life. It, what I'm saying is it should be seen as okay if somebody now and again just wants to have five minutes at their desk, just just putting their head down on their desk and, and just just having a, a quiet five minutes to themselves, just to relax. Definitely, 100%. Most workplaces, if you saw a colleague with their head down on a desk, you think, what are you doing? You know, you must have had a big night last night, how unprofessional. But I think it would really help business places, workplaces, if it were okay to do that, if it were perfectly acceptable to put a head down on the desk. And so long as you're only there for five minutes, and when someone looks over again, you're back to work, people should presume that they're just taking a few moments for mindful meditation rather than being totally hung over. It would make the workplace a more productive environment. So what we're saying here then is, is stress is good if you take control. If you're on the stress express, you're in the driving seat, you stop when you want to stop, you get off when you want to get off, and you get back on when you want to get back on. Take control. Stress is a friend. And the way you can get off that train is by doing some exercise, having sex, having a holiday every now and again where you do nothing, having a weekend that's not jam-packed with activities where you allow yourself to completely rest. A boring weekend is brilliant for allowing your stress levels to come down to the point where your body and brain can do maintenance, repairs, and set you up for the weeks and months ahead.